Hi there, Express Van owners. Today in your 2019 Chevrolet Express Van, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install ETBC7 Universal 7-Way Adapter Kit. So with this kit, you can get your four pole turned over to a seven way while still maintaining functionality of a four pole because that does come included with your seven way here. If you follow along with us, we're gonna get it installed here on the van and show you step by step so you can have the confidence to do it at home. We'll begin our installation here at the back of the vehicle. In order to install an ETBC seven kit, you have to have a fully functioning four pole. And this vehicle does already have a four pole. If you need one, we sell four pole wiring harnesses here at eTrailer.com. Now our customers already made some modifications in preparation. He wanted a seven pole here and he had already drilled out mounting holes for it. But in your ETBC7 kit, you do get a mounting bracket that you could easily just screw into the bottom of your hitch or your bumper. And we also have no drill brackets available here at eTrailer so you can just strap it around your hitch and have it stick out like something like this. But since they modified that, we're just gonna be using that. We are still gonna be using this bracket though. We're gonna be using it backwards so I'm gonna go ahead and slide it over our wiring backwards. And we're using it backwards. And the only reason we're using it at all is because the mounting here is just for a seven way that he provided us by drilling out the holes. And the ETBC seven kit comes with both a seven way and a four way. So we're gonna be putting this bracket behind it just like this. So we can slide the four pole into its slot here on the bracket. But typically it would go like this if you were gonna be mounting it with a no drill or just screwing it in. So I've gone ahead and mounted it in that location using the hardware that comes included with the kit. We then got our wires sticking out the back here. Our four pole connector here, we're just gonna open that up and that's gonna plug directly into the four pole that is already installed on the vehicle. That's gonna get all of our lighting signals up and running. We now have four more wires coming off of our ETBC7 kit. We've got a blue, a black, a yellow, and a white. The whites are ground, we'll be hooking that up momentarily. The yellow is for our reverse light circuit. This one we're not going to be hooking up, but if you wanted to, you could just tap into the reverse lights on your vehicle, just like splice into them. That will use your reverse light circuit on your vehicle, so you just want to keep that in mind if your trailer has any faults and it pops the fuse, the reverse lights on your vehicle also wouldn't work if you do hook that up like that. We're also gonna be hooking these two up. These are the main ones for our brake controller here. We've got our 12 volt circuit, which is gonna charge the battery on our trailer and run any accessories and things like that. And then we have our brake controller output wire here. This is what's going to send the signal to the brakes on our trailer. So we're gonna start by hooking up the ground. We're just gonna run this into the frame using a self-tapping screw that comes provided with the kit. We're now gonna take the duplex wire that comes in your kit which is a very large amount because we're gonna run this wire from here in the back up to the front where we're gonna connect it to our brake controller and to the battery. But here at the back, we're gonna connect it to our blue and our black. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use a razor knife here real quick to just kind of cut down the sheathing here at the back. You can just peel that open and then cut off the excess. We'll then strip both of those back. And we can now start connecting them. Now, I do recommend, rather than using the butt connectors that come pre-attached to your wires, to cut those off and replace them with heat shrink butt connectors. It's gonna seal it up back here to ensure we have a long-lasting corrosion-free connection. So I'm just gonna cut those off and strip both of these back so we can upgrade those. If you need heat shrink butt connectors, they're available here at eTrailer.com. So now we're gonna go ahead and hook these up. The blue wire, we're gonna put our heat shrink butt connector on, and then we're gonna attach it by crimping it on. And then the other end of our butt connector here will attach to the white wire from our duplex that we had stripped back there. Then we'll take our other butt connector. We're gonna take the black wire now, and we're just gonna do the same thing, connecting the black to the black. Then we can take our heat gun and shrink down our butt connectors. Now that we've got our wires connected here, we're gonna take the duplex wire and route it to the front of the vehicle. When routing it, you wanna avoid anything 
moving, such as your steering or suspension, and anything excessively hot like your exhaust. We're going to follow our factory wiring because it's already routed in a way that we know is not going to affect any of that. So we just poked it over the top of the frame and you can see it right there. And here's our factory wiring harness. We just zip tie it to the harness. It runs all the way down the side of our frame rail. There's a few points where it dips up on top the frame rail, but it's just right up on top. So we just follow it up on top and it will eventually, towards the front, come back down on the side and we just follow along, zip tying along the way until we get right here underneath the driver's door. At this point, I went ahead and stripped back the sheathing from here all the way forward from the rest of the wires because the white wire is our brake signal wire that's going to connect to our brake controller. It needs to go inside the vehicle. And the black wires, our charge line wire, that needs to go to the engine compartment. The white wire you can see here, I just poked through a grommet in the floor, just took my razor knife and cut a slit in it and poked the wire through. The black wire continues on following the harness. And once we get right over here on the other side of the body mount, this right here is fairly flexible. And you can get your hand in here and push your wire up and then we can go back up top in the engine compartment and we can reach down and grab the black wire and pull it up. I've gone ahead and I've pulled the wire up. You can get your hand right down in here to grab the wire and then just pull it up. You should be able to see it because you can see the top of the control arm, which is right where we stopped, right in front of that body mount. So you should be able to see the wire, reach down there, grab it and pull it up. And I routed it behind everything so that way it comes up here on the top. We're going to be mounting our circuit breakers in this kind of area over here. So this way our wire is going to be close to that so we can easily make that connection. So now we had our wires pulled up, we went ahead and mounted the circuit breakers. We just used the self-tapping screws that come included to run those right into the firewall here, just below where the weather stripping is. We cut the black wire off at the length right here to where it would attach, and we put one of the small ring terminals on it, and we crimped it on, and then we can go ahead and just attach it to our circuit breaker. We want to attach this to the silver post. That's the output from our breaker, the auxiliary, the load. And the copper post runs over to the battery. We just used another section of the duplex wire to continue on to run it over to the other side. On our second circuit breaker over here, we used some of the excess black wire that we'd cut off. We hooked it up to the silver post and then this wire ran inside because it's going to power the brake controller. We used the white wire from our duplex that we hadn't sheathed out yet to connect to the other side and that's also going to run to the battery. I'll just snug these down with a 3 8 wrench to secure the nuts on there. Now over here at the battery, you might be thinking, hey, my post doesn't look like that. And yours shouldn't. Yours post should look something like this. These type of battery posts where they're side terminals, you can't put accessories on them because you can see here you only have a limited amount of threads. And if you tighten it down in there with a, a ring terminal or something on that, it may not have enough threads and it may pull the threads out of your battery and then you have to replace the battery. So in order to do it right, just remove this stud, it just, pull, just unscrew it, eight millimeter wrench to take it off and then it just pulls out of the rubber sheathing on your positive terminal there. And then you can get the accessory bolt here at e-trailer that gives you a stud on it where you can add accessories to it. That's just gonna push right into the rubber and then thread right back into the battery. Then you get a nut here that you can remove and put your accessories on. So we took both the black and the white wire, we twisted them together and attached them to a single ring terminal that we slid over the stud and then tightened down. The ring terminal is very tight that comes in your kit over this stud because they're almost the same size. So to make it easier, I did use a pair of snips and just cut it so that way I could spread it apart a little bit to slide it over that. The black wire from our circuit breaker here needs to route inside and you'll find grommets right here on the firewall just below your brake reservoir right down in there. So now that we've got our wires routed inside, we're still missing one wire. And this is the only reason we're missing this wire is because the factory tow package wires that are located on our vehicle, all of them have been deactivated. And I checked the fuse box to see if I could just insert some fuses to activate them, but there's no prongs in the fuse box. So I'll show you the fuse box and the wires and you may or may not be able to use those. But if yours are inactive like ours, you can get your brake signal from the third brake lamp coming out of the body control module. This is over on the passenger side, right where you would normally have a glove box here. There's just a panel. I took out two bolts. The bolt holes are at the bottom here and then the panel just pulls right off and that's going to expose the body control module here behind it. The wire that we need is a light blue wire. It's the second pin on 
the purple connector right there, the violet, oh, it's kind of a violet pink-ish type color. And you can see the quick splice. I just used a quick splice to quick splice onto the blue wire and I added another wire on it to extend to the, over to the other side. That wire I just tucked underneath the panel and then you can see it sticking out here on the side. I just poked it over across over towards the driver's side so we can make a connection at our brake controller. We're now here on the driver's side and I did pull the carpet back so you could see down in here. This harness right here where it goes through the firewall and runs under the carpet, this is where you're gonna find your factory brake controller wires. You can see here that we have all the wires, but I've tested them and all of them are inactive with an exception of the black wire, which is our ground wire. So we can use the ground, but unfortunately the brake signal, the power, and the brake output from the pedal are all inoperative. They're still taped up here. So we'll take a quick look into our fuse box real quick and I'll show you on the back of the lid, it'll show you where your trailer fuses are. If they're missing, you can insert them. If the fuse doesn't feel like it's pushing in, then likely the pins are just missing in the fuse box and you'll have to install it like we are today. Our fuse box is right here on the driver's side, just next to the brake fluid reservoir and the power steering reservoir down here. We're just gonna push the two tabs. We can pull this up. And you kinda, kinda work it around to get it out of here. It's a very tight fit. And that's gonna reveal all your fuses, but You'll want to refer to the cover though. This is going to have all your fuses with the labels on what they do and what size is supposed to be there. So you can see here, 69, 10 amp power extension trailer. That's for the brake signal wire that's not operative inside. Those pins are missing. Uh, another one that you'll want is the trailer fuse, which is fuse number 11. That's a 30 amp fuse trailer wiring. If check to see if that one's there. So just go through and just look to see anyone that says TLR or trailer, and you'll wanna make sure you got those as to get those circuits up and running. If they won't, then you're gonna wire it just like we are here. You can see here that our fuse is missing, and if you look deep down in there, there's no pins down in there, because I already tried to put a fuse in there to make those circuits work, but it's just unfortunate they're not going to. I've gone ahead and put the carpet back, and now we need to get our module mounted up, our brake controller here. So I'm just kind of mocking it up in the bracket real quick just to get an idea of how far it's gonna stick out. We're gonna put it in a location about like this. And we're just gonna take the screws that come included with the kit and run them right in to our paneling here. And then we'll take the other one and run that one in as well. Then our bracket's just gonna slide up. We'll take the more machine screws. It doesn't have the pointy end because we're not running it into the panel. It's gonna go through the bracket and thread into the plastic mount for our brake controller. And then we'll run the other side in the same way. So now we've gone ahead and completed the rest of our connections. The red wire from our harness that came with our brake controller is gonna to go to the red wire that we ran over to the body control module wire that we tapped into. That's our brake signal. The blue wire from our harness will go to the white wire that we routed in, because this goes back. This is the output from the brake controller. And then the white wire from our harness is our ground wire. That connects to the black wire off of our factory wiring here, as that's the ground circuit, which is still is gonna always be active. Now, if your factory wiring was working, you would connect everything right here to the factory wiring. The red wire with white stripe would be your power wire, so that would connect to the black off your harness. The blue wire is the output, so that would connect to the blue wire on your harness. The black wire is ground, so that's going to stay the same. It would still connect to the white wire. And then this light blue wire that's in here would be your brake signal output, which would be this, replace this red wire and connect to the red wire on your harness. But again, none of these are working on ours, so that's why we didn't use them. Well, you can just bundle up your excess and zip tie it up. I'm just kind of getting how I'm going to be zip tying it there. The other end here is just going to plug into the back of the module. And you should see right away that your module has it lit up. So I'll press any key to continue. We currently don't have a trailer connected, so we're getting that warning. But if you do have a trailer connected, it would go to the normal screen. We're gonna go hook up our tester now just to make sure it's working. 
We're going to be plugging in a test box to test ours, but if you don't have a test box, you can get one here at eTrailer, or you can just plug it into your trailer and make sure that all the functions are working. I like the test box over that, just in case you have faults in your trailer, you can be certain that the issues are not with your vehicle. If we hit our slider on our brake controller, which has now gone to the normal screen, we can hear the text box activating and see it on the slider. But since we did the full ATBC 7, we want to check to make sure that the rest of our circuits work. So we want to make sure we have our left turn, right turn, our tail lamps. Go ahead and turn those off. Make sure you get your brakes. And you can hear the brake controller activating when we hit the brakes. And then if we just flip the switch on our box, that'll put us into our charge line mode. And we can see that we have battery voltage there, so it's charging up. So all of our circuits are working properly and we're ready to hook up our trail and hit the road, zip tie up any loose wiring you got, and you're all good. And that completes our installation of kit ETBC7 on our 2019 Chevrolet Express van.